Even as the probationers are busy fighting for their rights, the 2011 KPSC scam is taking a political turn with every passing day. On Tuesday, the former Chief Minister got an earful from Dr. Maitri, a successful KPSC candidate who has now earned the nickname of being the whistleblower in the 2011 KPSC scam. On Wednesday, there was more trouble coming in for the former chief minister. He was hit by a verbal volley from Mysore, courtesy the former MP and Congress leader H. Vishwanath. He sarcastically remarked that as the former chief minister, Kumar Swami needed to stay away from troubled waters. KPSC. Karnataka Public Service Commission, Uttara Devegoda Company Private Commission, Adanga Ude Krishna Amalino Briago Gonar Bimapa. There was more to come. Vishwanath noted that the family of the former Prime Minister H.D. Devegoda had a stronghold over the commission. Krishna Uru Nemka Gido, Madalna Barege. Member again, 1996, Jaj Patel Ro Mukhi Mantri Gado, Sidra Menor Ro Upamukhi Mantri Gado. The former MP took the battle right into the JDS camp and came up with a list of 13 questions to which he sought replies. So what are these questions? Why do you feel guilty when somebody mentions about the KPC scam? Are you involved in it? Is it a lie that your father, H.D. Deve Gowda, diluted the selection norms to select H. and Krishna in 1996? Why did you as the Chief Minister reduce the number of KPC members from 9 to 8? What authority do you have to access the call details of the Dalit lady candidate? Does it not amount to atrocity against the Dalit? Is it enough that only 362 people get justice? What about the others? Is it true that 127 of the 362 probationers are from your camp? Why are you batting on behalf of the 362 probationers? Who wrote the letter to Justice Wagela who was hearing the PIL on the KPSC irregularities of 1998, 1999 and 2004? Why did you visit former KPSC Chairman H. N. Krishna at Parapana Agrahara? Is it right to give the KPC exams a political and caste color? Why is your family speaking for the current and former members and the former chairman of KPSC? Are you speaking for HN Krishna and Gonal Bhimapa? The last 20 years. Will the 362 probationers now become unemployed? They are government employees. Shouldn't action be initiated against them for protesting against the government? Of the 362 probationers, there are less than 50 who are currently on strike. What about the rest? And Vishwanath was not alone. Former political heavyweight and senior advocate A.K. Subaya virtually endorsed Vishwanath's viewpoint. <laughs> Subaya also dismissed Kumar Swami's charge of 72 calls allegedly made by CM Sidramaya to people in KPSC. But the former Chief Minister Kumar Swami instead pointed fingers at both Sidramaya and H. Vishwanath. Rameshwarap Nauriya protection kutta wari yaru aga ega KPSC samushthe na tholi tivi enta hai dharala shuddha maad tivi enta hai dharala shuddha maad vay kuntta hai kutta hai dharala Vishwanath Vishwanath ko Rameshwarap Nauriya yen sambandha Despite so much happening the final word in the 2011 KPAC scam has not been spoken yet. Ram from Mysore, 
with Ramesh in Bengaluru for News 9. Many students dream of making a career after taking up the KPSC exams and to realize their dreams, they work very hard. But there are others who choose to take the devious path. And it is not just students, but even KPSC officials who are neck deep in corruption. The CID report, which was submitted to the government, only corroborates this. It's one of the most prestigious exams. But now, it's one of the most controversial exams. Yes, KPSC exams are indeed very prestigious. And at the same time, it is an accepted fact. It is also one of the most controversial exams as well. The moment the government understood that something had gone terribly wrong in the exams, it immediately ordered a CID probe in the matter. This was on 27th June 2013. And after the CID took up the probe formally, it took around three months to complete it and submit the report on September 10, 2013. Let's give you the important points of the report. During the probe, the statements of as many as 215 people were recorded, the call details of 720 mobile numbers and 75 bank accounts, 337 files were examined and 116 complainants too were questioned. Now let's give you the massive allegations one by one. Dr. Maitri was an aspirant for the post of Assistant Commissioner. She scored 1,009 marks in the mains, which was the highest by a candidate under the ST category. But Mangala, one of the members of the KPSC board, sought a humongous sum as bribe from her. In the interview, Dr. Maitri secured only 75 marks. But Supriya Banagar, another aspirant, scored 937 marks and 150 marks in the interview thus making her secure more marks. Hence, she was the one who was selected. This was the allegation made. During the probe, this is what the CID findings were. Indeed, as per the CID report, Dr. Maitri met Mangala at her chamber. After this, Mangala and her PA repeatedly called up Maitri, and Maitri herself called them both as many as 21 times. The report also says that Dr. Mangala did demand a huge sum as bribe, but Dr. Maitri didn't accede to their demand. So she was awarded fewer marks in the exams. On the other hand, Supriya, who was selected, secured more marks than her. There is one thing we must tell you at this point. As per the rules, neither the KPSC members nor the officials are supposed to meet the candidates. But in this case, Dr. Maitri indeed met Mangala. The calls made between them are also established. That creates a lot of suspicion. Well, that was about Dr. Maitri and her plight. Now, we will tell you how interviews were tailored to suit the whims and fancies of several students. As many as 1,084 candidates were called for interviews for 362 Class 1 and Class 2 posts. But these interviews were hurriedly arranged. And that is because Gonal Bhimapa was retiring on May 10, 2013. This being the case, in spite of the Vidhana Sabha elections, the interviews were held. It was decided that the interviews were to be conducted from April 1, 2013, but they were postponed in view of the elections. The interview started after the elections. The timings were from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Every aspirant was interviewed for 15 minutes and the results to be announced the next day. Around six KPSC members interviewed the aspirants. In the CID findings, it was found out that the interviews were hurriedly arranged in view of Gonal Bhimapa's retirement. The marks were awarded randomly in the interviews. Shockingly, the same marks were allotted by four to six KPSE members for every aspirant. More shocking is how the interviews ended in just two to three minutes instead of the allotted 15 minutes. In all, the interviews were conducted shabbily and hurriedly. 
Again, we have to tell you something that is all the more appalling. Though the interviews were scheduled to take place at the mentioned timings, they did not. For example, the morning interviews were slated to take place at 9, but the KPSC members used to arrive late. But the marks allotted would be the same. Some of the details that will leave you shocked are that the president of KPSC, Gonal Bhimapa, came eight days late to the interviews. Another KPSC member, Daya Shankar, came eight days late to the interviews. Key accused KPSC member Mangala Sridhar came six days late to the interviews, as did Kaniram and HD Patil, both KPSC members, they came six days late to the interviews. KPSC members Krishna Prasad and Mahadev came five days late to the interviews. The CID also has details on where actually these men who were to conduct interviews were by tracing the towers. But shockingly, these men have even signed on the relevant sheets saying that they were present at the time of interviews. Till now, we told you about the irregularities that the KPSC members indulged in, from seeking bribes to not conducting proper interviews. But now, we should also tell you that KPSC is also a marriage bureau. Take a look. When did KPSC become a marriage bureau? Instead of conducting exams in a sincere and efficient manner, what on earth is happening? It's very difficult to believe or even think, but what the CID report says is something that makes you wonder and even shocked. A KPSC member in fact asked one of the aspirants a favour. This favour is not money, but a request to marry his daughter. Amarnath was known famously as the agent of Gonal Bhima Pub. He has a daughter by name Amrita. He got his daughter engaged to Dr. Govardhan Gopal at La Meridian. In fact, Gonal Bhima Pub was also present on the occasion. Interestingly, he secured 1,027 marks in mains and 150 in the interview. Let's reiterate a government job was also confirmed and no financial transaction took place. And that's because he was the son-in-law of Amarnath. Gonal Bhimapa permitted this favour. And the story only gets murkier. There are also allegations that many in the KPSC have taken the wrong route to succeed in the exams. Now we give you an example. In the report submitted to the government, the CID has specifically mentioned a case related to one Abhishek Hegde. Abhishek's mom, Srimati Padmarekha, was an assistant secretary in KPSC. Well, there are no prizes for guessing what she did. Of course, she used her influence in getting him prosperous. In the prelims, Abhishek got only 236 marks, or in the words of the CID report, he managed to scrape through. But in the mains, his marks just skyrocketed to 995. And hold on, in the interview, he secured 150 marks. His name also figured prominently in the list of probable candidates. In the meantime, his mother was transferred to another department as her son was writing the exam. Also, there is another startling point that we need to tell you. She had called KPSC member Parshmanath as many as six times and her PA Neemraj 23 times, Mangala Sridhar's Habi Sridhar Narayan three times and Lakshman, the sub-secretary, two times. All these have been exposed in the report. In another incident, the father of Nitin Chakki met one of the workers of Gonal Bhimapa by name Anil at his home. There are further allegations that Gonal was influenced by this worker to make Nitin Chakki succeed in the exam. In the mains, Nitin secured 1067 marks and in the interview, he secured 150 marks. In fact, it is further said that Nitin made calls from his father's cell phone to Anil as many as 20 times. Not just this, he has also made calls to KPSC member H.D. Patil three times, KPSC member Dayashankar's P.A. Raghunath four times, and the matter is still under investigation. In all, many officials, members and the president of KPSC are involved in the scam. In the final round of interviews, as many as 1,085 candidates appeared for the interview. Out of these, as many as 39 candidates were in touch with some of these officials over phone for hours at stretch. Many candidates in touch with KPSC over phone. 39 candidates in touch with many KPSC officials. In the final list, 28 names were mentioned. Maximum marks of 150 awarded to 18 people. 
As a rule, candidates are not supposed to be in contact with these officials, but in this case, as said, as many as 39 were in touch.